Hello. Happy you there? I'm here. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I'm just getting situated here and everything and um uh, yeah. I was like pretty sure that we weren't even gonna do it tonight just because like everybody was just kind of AWOL. <laughs> I was like, what is yeah. this, guys? Oh <laughs> Well I'm <Yeah>. here. <laughs> I have like yeah, people are telling me they have like circumstances beyond their control and everything. So I'm just like, all right, well I really hate getting out of pattern and rhythm with everything, you know, because kind of just for the people who are actually here and like you and Brenda typically, but Brenda's not here. But like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it just like slows it down. Oh, but um, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing good. Doing good. better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been a, a very interesting week for me. Just me too. <laughs> Lots me of, too. It's emotional clearing and everything happening. Yeah, I actually just was watching your uh, video that you put in the, let's see, where was it? Well, I don't know if I should switch over there right now. Um, let's see, how to Jill, oh, I can't see it all. <laughs> oh, with the emotions there it is. effectively, yeah. Yeah, that was a really good video. I was I was actually commenting and I just left it to come over here, but that was a really good video. It was very good. In fact, that's something that I do and before I pushed it all away, just like you were saying, and um, it is super effective. I mean, really, I mean, a lot of times when I was younger, it was like, you can't have those kinds of emotions. You're supposed to be tough, you know? <laughs> So I would just be like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show anybody my emotions. I'm just gonna be tough, and that really stuck with me for years. In fact, until I had my youngest one. So um, he really shifted our thinking into this, you know. So it's like I'm rebirthing myself right now, <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> and there's birthing pains involved in that, you know. Yes, it's, it's, it's yes. very. It's challenging. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I would actually draw pictures of myself screaming. Oh, I yeah. So I was so, I had so much anger and so mm -hmm. much um, emotion just pent up inside of me. And that was like a way that I felt safe letting it out. You know, just pieces yeah. like going like, ah, you know. Yeah. It's just release. <laughs> a lot of release. A lot of release. Yeah. Ah, so, I mean... That's, that's some of the stuff that I want to talk about tonight is, um, you know, just like starting with like that very first section in the book, you know, talking about anger is fuel and really being able to mm -hmm. use it, using it as just energy, pure energy. And yes. rather than like pushing it aside and being uncomfortable with it as energy and, you know, trying to... Um, spiritualize it or trying to you know trying to push it aside and in, in all of these ways mm -hmm. like if we if we don't utilize it as that pure energy that it is it mm -hmm. gets stuck in us and then it creates like these these blocks for us and it makes us not want to create because yeah. we're, we're afraid of being angry and we're afraid of actually yes. experiencing the emotions and stuff so um, yeah I don't know if you saw that that fuck you therapy, the dance therapy video that uh -uh. I made the other day. But <laughs> No, I didn't. I haven't been on there in a while, so I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> it's okay. I mean I'll give you the basic gist of it, but you know, basically just talking about, you know, when we're we're expressing the emotion that we can actually allow it to just come out and you know, if you need to say the word fuck you a whole bunch and just like dance around with your middle finger <laughs> up in the air and just kind of like move up that vibrational ladder, so to speak, you know? Yes. Because, you yeah. know, the jump from despair to anger is easier than the jump from despair to happiness, you know? Absolutely. And, and you got to <laughs> climb the ladder even if it feels uncomfortable mm -hmm. and you feel like you don't want to say the word fuck. I mean, typically when people don't feel comfortable saying the word fuck, it's because they're very repressed and they're very right. uh, not okay with just expressing themselves naturally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, you hear so often that it's wrong. Don't do that. Don't say that. You know, you get 
uh, these ideas in your head that what's wrong and right. Well, when you start to release yourself from that, then you can just feel yourself, you know, being okay with who you are. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and saying what you feel like saying. <laughs> and I've asked the word fuck a million times. Like, I have a couple morning pages that I've done where I just write the word fuck, like, like, a, like, like the whole page. Because <laughs> it makes I me have, feel better. I have to, yeah, I have to admit, I have one. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been over the last week, so it's been yeah. a, it's been I a mean, week. It's, it's timely, because <laughs> this... This week, I mean, particularly just following the path of the book and everything, mm -hmm. um, you know, she puts it right out that, you know, this week you may be finding yourself dealing with unaccustomed bursts of energy and sharp peaks of anger, joy, and grief. You are coming mm -hmm. into your power as the illusory hold of your previously accepted limits is shaken. You'll be asked to consciously experiment with op spiritual open-mindedness. And within that spiritual open-mindedness is, you know, open-mindedness to our own anger and our own grief. Mm -hmm. you know, Certainly. I had, I had um, you know, the, the, the video that I made, you know, that one that you just watched, mm -hmm. I made that video the morning after I had just an intense, just cathartic experience, like listening to music and just really grieving John and mm -hmm. that relationship that I had with him because I hadn't actually allowed myself to feel that quite yet. You know, yeah. I did the whole spiritual numb out thing and it mm -hmm. was kind of unconscious because I thought, well, you know, eh, I saw it come in and, you know, like, and, and I didn't really acknowledge the uh -huh. loss that I felt Yeah. until, you know, I started manifesting the symptom of just my heart just feeling like it was being tightened in on all day, every day. And just like, what is this feeling? What is this feeling? And then I actually consciously made myself some space that night to allow whatever was going to come to come. And what happened was no. beyond my imagination. Like I sat there literally crying for like an hour straight, like listening to all of the saddest breakup songs I could think of. And like, yeah. just, just really like pouring it out. And what happened the next morning was amazing. Like I just felt so much lighter. I felt so uh -huh. just like I was on a cloud or something because I had actually allowed yeah. it to run its course. And that's like what I'm really passionate about getting the message across to people is because it actually allows you to to experience like this this heightened sense of awareness and just this open mindedness about your whole life. Yeah. You know, you can't experience when you're you're focusing and concentrating on this problem that you're experiencing. Oh yeah. Allowing yourself to have the problem complete itself and you get stuck in it and you cycle in the thoughts about it and you don't actually allow the emotions and the grief to be processed. Yeah. Uh, I, but when, it's, it, when it's cleared, yeah, it's just like, like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking <laughs> in a totally different way now. Like the it's world so is true. so much bigger. <laughs> yeah, so much brighter. I mean, it's amazing. When I watched that, it, it reminded me of um, something I had done in my journal. Let's see. Yeah. I have it right here on... January the 6th of 2013 and I was looking at it and this was at a time when I just started doing this kind of journaling um, painting kind of journaling and um, it was like worth worthiness and so I should just give you an example of how dark it felt <laughs> oh wow yeah I don't know if you can see that but the words on it were telling myself just to breathe just to be okay with where I am you know it was very um, an emotional time and so then the next page um, I did, you know, I asked myself this question for days. How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Over and over, I would, I just left it open. And so, and this was, I did both of those on the 6th. And by the 9th, I was feeling so good <laughs> that I was, you know, doing things that, you know, sparkles and, yeah, exactly. That, and that's what I was listening to. Yeah, that's yeah. feel good music for me. And then me on too. the same day, I was able to uh, feel how good it felt. And so I did this, and I don't know if you can see it on here. It's the flower power of love. I can't, actually. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, because it's a really, just a drawing, like really light sketch of what I wanted mm -hmm. to paint. But um, it was me feeling the love coming from a flower and then passing that love past me to the next flower and on and on and on because that's letting that release, letting all of that 
stuff that was stuck in my vibration out on paper and on and paint, you know, just get it out, really, really felt good, you know, and I was able to go from that to feeling like, like you said, on a cloud, <laughs> just <Yeah>. like flying. <laughs> So I really, <clears throat> it was, and, and I related so much to your video in that way, you know, because it's true, it really does help, it really does work, so, you know. It I'm, does, but it's always <laughs> kind of like the path that people don't want to take, mm -hmm. you know, it's easier for us to kind of coat it with like, you know, <clears throat> spiritual, like, everything will be okay, and yeah. just be positive, but that's called spiritual bypass, you Yeah, know, you just skate right <clears throat> over the emotion, and you and you kind of invalidate yourself in the process. You and do. That's not, that's not being authentic with yourself. Yeah. Well, and you can't really move yourself to a new place that way. You just kind of feel like you're stuck in that. You know, you never go yeah. anywhere. So. Yeah, that's the thing. That I mean, a lot of people who, who want to be, you know, have a better life, people who want mm -hmm. to think more positively and things like that, that's just a concept that they don't really understand. Which yeah. is why a lot of them still don't have very happy lives and they're not feeling very, you know, there's there's a lot of struggle to try to maintain their their, yeah. their placebo of mm -hmm. just um, this like baseline, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's still I mean, that undercurrent. There's an undercurrent that they don't acknowledge and that's actually something that, you know, my friend here, Dave, really likes to address in some of his videos. Um his on his channel and paradigm shift and educational comedy you know because he finds it a lot in like the new age community you know people mm -hmm. like wanting to to do that and then they wonder why and you know manifestation yeah. and stuff all that doesn't work <laughs> you know oh right right <clears throat> exactly <Yeah. clears throat> exactly i don't know where my oh. voice is going <laughs> <laughs> taking off on me <laughs> oh Oh, but you saw my mine in the video too, the little picture that I drew. I did. I did. I was like, wow. <laughs> it's a morning face. I got I'm really good at drawing good. those faces when I was like 13. It's just like, wow. I would just like, what? I would just uh, like feel out the lines on my face, and yeah. I would just like kind of translate them to paper. <laughs> Wow, that is awesome. I mean, I know it was a hurtful thing, but that is just really awesome <laughs> to do that, you know. I mean, that's... Yeah, it was helpful, because then I could actually feel the anger and the pain mm -hmm. when I was looking at the picture. Yeah, it's really good art. <laughs> Thank you. It's really good. The, the good art comes from the intense pain and the intense emotions, so... I'm learning that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me actually allow it to happen. Uh -huh. Like those sketchbook pages you just showed me are actually really good compositionally. Just mm -hmm. and the the use of like the light and the dark and everything. I really, really like that. Oh wow, thank you. I just I never yeah. show them to anybody. You're you're like the only the second person to see that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a it's a it's a thing, you know. You have a block when you have a block about your, you know, who your work is or what your work is. It just it kind of just stays with you until you release it, you know, until you move yeah. it. That that's what this is all about. Well, it's about a lot of things, but <laughs> that's one of the many components, you know, of all of this. Yeah. So. So, have you noticed any like significant synchronicities happening for you since you like did all that? Um, you know, the, I wasn't sure how far back I was supposed to go, but this week I had just like three, like even yesterday was something synchronistic happened. Um, you know, I was writing one of the exercises, she says, what was your five favorite childhood foods? And um, one of them happened to be a funnel cake, you know, and you can only get those, I, I think, at the fair or at a carnival. And mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my sister-in-law, um, not before last, and we talked about it, and we talked about fries, actually, n not funnel cakes. We talked about fries because we both love fries, and that's like our main favorite food. And so she was going through recipe after recipe of fries. We talked for about two hours, and at the end of the conversation, she says, you've got to try one more thing. She says, it's really good. And she tells me, get ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and french fries. And I'm like, ice cream and french fries? And she says, yeah, you'll love it. And I said, are you sure? And she says, yeah, yeah, it tastes just like funnel cake. And I was like, oh, 
that's it, perfect. <laughs> I mean, that was exactly what I needed to hear. And so I thought, that, that is awesome, you know. And she also, during that conversation, told me to eat at a place. I'm in a new area, so I don't know anything here. And um, she says, eat at this place called Five Guys uh, Burgers and Fries. You're going to love it. And so I was like, okay, I'll have to look it up and all of this. And I hadn't had the time, so I didn't look it up. But yesterday, we were going to a new Target because I didn't quite like the one in this area very much. So on the way to this new Target, um, my little girl says, I want Jamba Juice. You know, she'd been asking for days for Jamba Juice. So um, just so happened that right next to the Target was Jamba Juice. So we go in that um, little vicinity and go into Jamba Juice. And we walk out and we look up in there and there in the same little area as Five Guys Burgers and Fries, like right next door, or two doors down. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that is totally awesome. That was, that was for me, a great synchronicity. I didn't even have to look for it. It just came to me. So, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool, you know. And so a few other things happened, but those are the most recent, you know, from the exercises were extracted, you know, and I just thought that was really cool. <laughs> Your little child that. is looking for you. I know, right? I know it. That is just amazing. I'm, I'm embracing so that cute. now, you know. I, I see you it, even put some <laughs> braids in your hair and everything. I just like that a lot. <laughs> I love that. It's really freeing. I spend a lot of time just playing in that way because um, for a while, all I did was put it up in that bun for like a year straight, and I was like, I'm so done with being this old lady who just puts her hair up like this. You know, it's time to feel, let my inner child play again. You know, instead of closing it off and blocking that part of me, I, I was ready to embrace it, you know. And so this is also perfect part of that, you know, just reading that in this book, you know, that it's okay to embrace your inner child. You know, and, and yeah. play and have fun again. <laughs> you know, it's part of the. It's part of life. It's life giving, really. It know. really is. Yeah. I uh, I so want to show you and like the rest of the women in the group like a video of me like when I started this process. Um, it's up on YouTube actually. Like, of is me. it? Of me, it's my very first video I ever made, and it's it's on self criticism and judgment. Oh wow! And you know, I used to dress in like clothes that were just baggy, and just you know, I would never do my hair. I would like, I just totally neglected how I looked because I just was so depressed. Yeah, <laughs> and, been there. And, like yeah, like and and that's like the funny thing is because that's like this this like creative. Um, just anorexia in a sense, like you just starve yeah. your, your inner creative person. You don't let that person shine through and you don't let that person actually mm -hmm. come forth and be the beautiful person that it is and the creative person and the playful person and, you know, you yeah. just starve it of all of its nutrition. Yeah, yeah. I feel and, that. Yeah, and so that's why I'm really like complimenting you on that, that braid in your hair because it, it's, it's like a little <laughs> tiny statement for you mm -hmm. of the direction you're going. It really is, yeah. <laughs> and, and I picked right up on that because yeah. it's just like, mm. just even the different colors you put in your hair and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's like a lot today, of fun. Today I painted my nails orange. <laughs> I was looking at that. I was, I was like, wow, that is really pretty. It is very pretty. I like it. But, you know, it's it's we don't do these things in order to be like typical, like model perfect or anything like that. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not that sense of beauty. It's not that sense of trying to make ourselves into a um, structured way of being beautiful. You know, and I think yes. that's where we kind of disconnected from, you know, wanting to take care of ourselves physically. Uh -huh. uh, it's because we didn't want to be like those women or like those Barbie yeah. dolls, those, those people. But there's a totally different way of relating to beauty and um, to our own self-expression. There is, yeah. And uh, where it happened for me, I can remember back when it happened where I stopped, um, you know, being, you know, dressing myself up. I, I went through the baggy clothes experience because people were like, you don't look good enough. You don't look like her. You don't look like her. And so um, that began a cycle with me. I dressed in really baggy clothes and 
ratted my hair just because, you know, nobody liked it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it was, um, it was an experience, you know, that was, that was when I was probably, I was 12. I was 12 when that happened. And so those experiences, you know, kind of built the character that I started to become. And now I'm, and I'm, I'm like peeling the layers from that character that was created during this time, you know, and, and letting myself be um, more of who I feel inside. You know, I used to write poems and I used to, you know, express myself and do things I loved until other people started saying, that doesn't look good. That's not right. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't look like that. You know, and I thought, what, okay, tell me how I should look then, you know. <laughs> so I just went into a mode of just not even caring anymore. Just stopped, stopped being creative at all, you know for a long, long time. So to, to let that shine back through, wow. It, it, is, it is an amazing feeling. You know. even, even when I do my hair, that is, that is art for me. That's like, for me, um, because it's like a paste, it's paint, it's pretty much just paint. So I'll get it and at first they're like, wear gloves and I'm like, I can't, I just want to feel the paint on my fingers and go through each piece of my hair and, and you know, for me, I'll sit for hours and put the color in my hair and people are like, why, you know, why do you do that? And I'm like, man, it's so fun. It just feels so good to do, you know, so. Mm -hmm. For me, that that's like a canvas. It really is. <laughs> I understand that. I went through a phase when I was a teenager where I actually had so many different colored hairs. Like I had teal yeah. hair, I had magenta hair, I had mm -hmm. purple hair, I had blue hair, I had dark brown hair with like blonde highlights, and I had blonde wow. hair with dark brown highlights and um, low lights, and you know the the color underneath and uh -huh. just the different pieces of color through my hair. I just loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't care that, you know, it wasn't good for my hair or whatever. I just I just adored it. But then I went through this phase, though, where I got really sick, you know, when I was um, 16, 16, 17. And mm -hmm. you know, I was recovering from anorexia and everything like that. And I just mm -hmm. gave up on my hair and I gave up on my image. And I gave up on all of it because I thought that um, caring about my image meant that I was vain and it meant that I... Yeah, was destroying myself because I was trying to make myself look a certain way, and to some extent that was true, but also there was just this this idea though that meant that I had to completely shun my outward expression, and that stayed yeah. with me for a couple of years, and it was a very painful thing for me um, that I didn't realize that was so painful for me until I actually started like reclaiming that part of myself and realizing how uncomfortable yeah. I felt to reclaim it. And then I actually started getting fun, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like those little tiny steps that we take, though. I mean, there was, like, a quote in the book that was really great, like, uh, making a commitment sets the wheels of the universe in motion, and the universe is, is prodigal, and it's support when we are mis miserly in what we accept. You know, and mm -hmm. that the universe will reward you for taking risks on its behalf, and yeah, and just the idea that possibility is scarier than impossibility. <laughs> you know, yeah, freedom, freedom is actually more frightening for us than any prison is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> truly, <laughs> that's <But> true. <laughs> that is this process that we're going through is getting more and com more comfortable with that discomfort, getting more comfortable mm -hmm. with the fact that. You know, we have all of these great, great, great creative capacities and abilities, and there's so many possibilities out there for us. And all that God asks of us is that we just play with them and experiment and act like a little child in the sense that we are just constantly wanting to expand our horizons just a little bit more and to just, mm -hmm. you know, play with that new nail polish and, and put yeah. those new colors on the page and play with your hair just a little bit and, you know, maybe wear a different dress than you normally would and, you know, just play with the energy of it all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to go through some of your um, your exercises with me, like the the tasks that you did? Sure. Let me get them down. If you want to share any of them. 
what have you what do you got in mind to have a lot written here? <laughs> um, if you have anyone sticking out like that you'd like to share, otherwise I'll randomly pick something for you to share. No, you go ahead. I, I wanna I'll follow you. <laughs> I'd like to hear the, the the five traits that you liked in yourself as a child. I just read those a second ago to myself. Let me see. <laughs> five traits. Okay. Um, I think I kind of made it just a, a little bit more than five. I'm not sure because I put some together. Anyhow, um, it says happy and smiling. I was every picture. Every, I can always remember. I was always happy and smiling, no matter what. Um, love. I loved unique, odd things. Um, I loved to create my own style of things, like my own style of clothes, my own hairstyles, just to be. It was that creative me. Now that I think about it, coming out, coming forward, and I was just letting it play. Um, I loved music, and I loved helping others feel better. Those are the the, the five that really stick out in my mind. You know, Those are thinking back. Traits. <laughs> Thank you. And what was your childhood room like? Um, you know, I went through several rooms in my head. We moved a lot, and so the last the room that really has my heart is my last room that I, I lived with a parent in, and um, and that was my dad's house, and um, it was filled. My walls were filled with music I loved. Um, I had trolleys. You remember the trolleys? Yeah. I, had the, the, I loved those. I had them everywhere. Um, it had my poems on the walls, um, all in frames, because one of my poems had been published in a book, which I completely forgot about until wow. reading this stuff. Wow. And so, yeah, I was like, wow, that's cool. All that stuff went in the trash when I left because of my circumstances I was in, I guess. But, you know, I kind of left that all there and thought, that's what you do as a kid. You can't do that anymore. You know, having this freedom to put things on your walls. And, you know, I can see it all in my head even right now. I can go sit on my bed and look up. Um, I had my teddy bear my dad bought me when I was 13, and it was always on my bed. Um, so, well, for the last, for those two years that I was there, um, when I was 14, 15, when I was 16, I moved out. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was my room. It was filled with, with things that I loved everywhere. <laughs> All uh, pictures of me and my love because we've been together for 19 years. So, that was the, our first year together was in that house, um, in that room. So, um, my bed was a twin bed, and it had Flintstone sheets on it, and um, I loved the Flintstones. <laughs> and I had, I had a stereo, a big stereo with a record player on top that my dad had bought for my 13th birthday because I loved music, and he bought the these big giant speakers to go with it. So on each side was these big giant speakers, and um, I would always play it. There was a TV that I never turned on, but um, always had the music on. And so the the walls were white, but you couldn't even see them because they were so filled with things that I loved, you know. So, yeah, I could see it very vividly, and and it was one of my the fav my favorite memories ever of of having a room <laughs> as a child. Out of all the years, that was my favorite. So, so awesome. <laughs> Awesome. My favorite room when I was a child was, um, just because I, I love sharing about this because it's so cool, I, my favorite room was when I was 12 years old and I had a waterbed and I had tie-dye sheets on this waterbed and I had like, like awesome. these things hanging from the door and my room was totally hippie. Like my mom, my mom called me her little hippie child. Oh, I, I, yeah. just, I just was like, I always wore bright colors, you know, mm -hmm. teal and teal and lime green shirts and orange pants, you know, pink, like fluorescent colors. And I just, yes. I just, I just had no sense of just like, you know, you can't wear that because that's not right. <laughs> you know, I just, I just loved color and color has been my thing for like ever until I decided mm -hmm. to be like a grown up and, you know, dress in yes. black. <laughs> Dressing yes. black and tea and tan and, and gray and like things that just are not colorful. Boring. Yeah, boring, <laughs> right? Ah, uh, yes. 
But, you know, that was part of my process, though, is kind of bringing back, you know, my tie-dye self, my, myself, yeah. I just loved all of these colors, and yes. just didn't give a rip if it doesn't match or doesn't make sense. And yeah. That's, that's what, that's what the, the essence of a creative child spirit is, you know, is, hmm. you know, having a bunch of candles on your headboard, and it doesn't matter if yeah. they're different sizes and different colors and, you know, the little nicky mm -hmm. nicky things and you know, <laughs> yeah. the things that just make you feel happy. Feel good, yeah. Yeah. You know, like the little wall hangings. I had big flower power wall hangings on my 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 walls and oh, you know, cool. posters of bands that I loved and <laughs> just yeah, just, things that just <laughs> excited you. And you know, well, for us to nurture that part of us, we don't necessarily have to go out and recreate all that. Mm -hmm. But to to be able to see things in that way again is really really important. Yeah. I think. I think that's what you're doing, and, and I'm really happy about that because I just I love seeing uh, that childlike spirit you know flow back into people because that's where good oh, art comes man. from. That's where you know all the great ideas come from because our adult brain doesn't think very creatively. <laughs> it's very very boring. No, and, and it tells you that it's not good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that brings me into my next point. Um, if you don't mind me moving forward in my discussion, no, <laughs> um, no, not you know, at all. The um, there were just a couple highlights from the book that really just stood out to me when I was really going over it before the the webinar tonight, and you know this idea of what will people think? You know, what will mm -hmm. people think about this piece of work that I just did? Like, what will people think if they see this? And, you know, that, that shame that you feel, like, like yeah. that you've expressed, you know, a couple times on this call, like, I'm the only person who ever shown your journal pages to, or, you know, that kind of thing, like, mm -hmm. because, oh, my God, what will people think? And especially because they were really dark, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, this, this quote, the act of making art exposes a society to itself. Art brings things to light. It illuminates us. It sheds light to our lingering darkness. It casts a beam into the heart of our own darkness and says, see? You know? Yeah, so, exactly. So the little child in us has just been wanting to have all of these things be seen. And it doesn't have any concept of good, bad, right, or wrong. Um, wholesome or unwholesome or, you know, this, this mm -hmm. kind of notion, this morality judgment that we have on it, it just wants the truth to be exposed and the yes. truth of our, our beingness to be exposed. Light, dark, good, bad, right, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. And, and it's just now where I can be okay with that, you know, because just like that, it was too dark. People might think, you know, I'm depressed or something. I mean, yeah. I have a family that takes things to the extreme. So you do something dark like that, you need medications or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I come from that kind of family too. <laughs> so I just keep it all to myself. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like what you would call a loner, I guess. I've been that way all my life. So um, my love is the same way. We were both loners, you know, we, we had families that were very, very different from us, very different thinking, and um, and we could feel within us that, wait, this is not that wrong, this is okay, you know, and hear from them, no, it's not, and it's not just one of them, it's a whole gang of them, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so then, then it became keep it to yourself, you know. But do you realize how, like, unproductive that is for you now, yeah. this stage in your yeah. life? Absolutely, yeah, in many ways, many, many ways, yeah, yeah, it, it is. I, I understand that so deeply because, you know, my family had them the same way, you know, if there was a, an angry poem written or a, yeah. sad, a sad picture drawn, it's like, do we need to go see your therapist, <laughs> like, yeah. do we need to go off your medication, you know, this kind of mm -hmm. thing, like. No, exactly. Being medicated as a child is a nightmare, but you know, that's yeah, something that I had to deal with. But I honestly found that 
this whole act of writing out my feelings and drawing my feelings yeah. and everything like that was more helpful for me than any medication they ever prescribed me. Oh, yeah. Because it gave me an inner knowing that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And, Absolutely. You know, that's just something that repressed people don't understand. And that's something that, you know, families, parents, you know, who are all playing their own game of denial, mm -hmm. denial of energy and emotion and all that kind of stuff, like, it's something that they just cannot fathom, you know? No, no, but it's true. <laughs> and, you know, it's we've come to realize that some are just not ready. Maybe in this whole lifetime they won't be ready, you know, and that's okay. But you, in turn, can be okay with that you are ready, that you are, you know, um, accepting this as who you are and, and blossoming from it, you know, not exactly. being repressed in that way. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 pretty a it's a pretty amazing journey. <laughs> it is. All of this, you know. And it's, I'm sure it's... you understand that most people are not going to understand you, and that's totally okay. It's part of being on yeah. the leading edge, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is certainly. You actually start to get to like your own company quite a bit, I'm sure. You know, I've, I've had my own company, it's been all I had as a child, you know, I, I would just spend a lot of time with myself, and I realize now that it wasn't just me I was spending time with, it was it was all of me, my, my the wholeness of who I am, you know, it was my inner me, and my guides, and everything that was, you know, yeah. there, you know, with me, and making sure that I, you know, just, just talking with me as a friend would you know and people are like that's crazy you know and I'm like no it's not crazy you know it's, it's real for me <laughs> some of the best company you'll ever get too mm -hmm. you know because they know you the best you that's yourself true knows you the best absolutely I believe it <laughs> yeah you talked a couple times about making pieces of artwork and stuff like that and, you know, kind mm -hmm. of just feeling sort of not good about them and, you know, kind of keeping them hidden a little bit. And I was curious if you had read that part about, um, like, upon completion of a work that you kind of get that numbing out effect and you kind of just sort of push it away and you're like, ah, oh, it really wasn't that good anyway or, you know, whatever, just to kind of keep yourself from feeling that vulnerability of, yes. um, you know, having people criticize it and, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, yeah, yeah, that. I wanted to discuss that with you because that was something really, really that stuck out to me. You know, I've read this book quite a few times and that one part really stuck stuck out to me because it's something that I noticed that I still do. And it's it's funny because it's like these little things that you just didn't notice you did before and they're happening. Yes. They're, they're right there. <laughs> like, Whoa, yes. where is that coming from? You know, here I have like all of this these ideas about myself and Yeah. You know, there there's just like <laughs> you know Yep. Indicators. The yep. indicators. And yes. that was just really interesting to me um, because now I'm realizing how that, for me, did come from, you know, being afraid of somebody telling me that my artwork was bad or telling me that, yeah. you know, something was, you know, not as good as it should be or could be mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. You know, like, I'll post something on Facebook, like a painting or something, and then it'll get, like, 40 likes or something, and I'm just like, ah, eh, whatever. I think I should have done the face different. You know, like, like stuff like that. I'm yeah. Just, Where is that coming from? You know, who's saying <laughs> that? Like, I was so excited about this painting, this picture, and then all of a sudden I yes. had interest in it. Uh, yeah, because for me it's like I'll, I'll do a picture, like, take a picture and I'll put it up there and then I'll judge it afterwards thinking this is what they must be thinking while they're looking yeah. at my picture. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's not. Often yeah. It's really not. They're seeing a totally different picture than you are than yeah. I am, you know. Mhm. Mm but it's what happens. Yeah. But you yeah. almost feel embarrassed about it, right? Like you yes. feel embarrassed about it being up there. Yep. It's almost like yeah. I should hide that now. Everybody's seen it. Now take it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go through that a lot, actually. <laughs> but you know what yeah. I'm finding, though, is that 
you know, even if it's like a video or a piece of writing or a picture or a painting or something, mm-hmm. that's so good for you to just leave it up. <laughs> and I found that too. I, that's why I have started to leave it. But it was kind of a really tough thing to begin with to start to let myself do that. You know, it was really tough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a process. I mean, yeah. It's been like two, three years for me in the process of, you know, putting things up and posting them publicly and then leaving mm-hmm. them there and, you know, allowing the criticism or comments to come as they may. And, you know, yeah. But that's part of what I'm finding, at least, is that that's part of creativity is yeah. you, know, you, you create something spontaneously in the moment and then you share that spontaneous moment with others and then you go on and create more spontaneous moments of Mm -hmm. art and stuff like that. And nothing is ever a hundred percent perfect, but yeah, you know, it's, and it's, and it becomes like, okay, it becomes okay. Mm -hmm. that There's, there's perfection in the imperfection. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's it's like I like to say all the time when people say you're, you know you hear you're not perfect or you should do this more perfect. It's it's perfectly imperfect. <laughs> you know that's how it feels. It's perfectly uh you know unperfect. It's great, you know. Yeah. So it's really really exciting I think because the more that we do that, the more we're willing to take risks and the more we're willing mm-hmm. to make take chances on our artwork because we're not yeah. thinking that it needs to be good or a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know, just, <laughs> and the less preconception we have about what things need to look like when we get started, mm-hmm. the more opportunities there are for things to go in a different direction. Yeah. Know, in a way that we didn't even fathom could happen. That so happens. many times I sit down at a painting or something like that and I'm just like what the hell this is uh, yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah yeah I do it but when I go to think I'm going to share it or let even I'll just say it like this I'll be painting in my own little space because I get all secluded when I paint and the kids will come in and I'm covering it all up and I'm like you know y'all got to go play you can't see this and it's like why you know, and I ask myself that, and I ask my inner self that so many times. Why do I keep hiding this? You know, it's nothing bad, but it feels like, you know, why are you doing it this way? Why are you doing it that way? Why can't you just, you should paint it this way, you know, all those things. And I let all of that block me and, and be that person who just paints in the darkness where nobody can see, and <laughs> you know, instead of just um, letting it, letting it flow, you know, and like this book says, there was a part, you know, like you were talking about a minute ago, where you'll be in a creative mode and be making a piece of art, and then all of a sudden, you know, maybe a couple of days you're working on it, and then all of a sudden you lose interest completely in it, and and it's like, what happened? I really liked that. Then now it's not any good anymore, you know, and I'm like, well, how did that happen? And I, I realize, I think, what's happening is... I'm judging it day after day. I'll look at it and I'll judge it, and then I think somebody else may see it and be judging it, and I should just erase it all and, and make that blank and start over. You know, so so many things are happening where it's just blocking that you know creative flow. Because when I just let it flow and just let, I'll sit for an entire day and nonstop paint. Just yeah, you know, I'll have a coffee, I'll have water, I'll take a bath and break, but just paint because I'm in that flow. And I don't even take the time to look at it. I just do it. And when I'm done, I'll stand back and I'll be like, wow, that looks really cool. And then I start thinking, what is this person going to think? What is that person going to think? And I'll hide it. <laughs> I'll put it up and I won't let anybody see it. That's a natural <laughs> response, you know. Like That's a natural response that we have to protect ourselves from shame. But the thing yeah. we need to realize is that we're already shaming ourselves. Yeah. So what worse could anybody else do? Else do. <laughs> it's true. You know, what else could anybody do to like I don't know, validate <laughs> the fact that we are terrible painters or something, you know? Like, All right. And that's yeah. so painful. That's so painful. It is. It's it is painful. It almost makes you just not want to do it anymore. You know, just but then you're gonna go through your life not doing this and not doing that because you're feeling you know, you gotta move this energy, mm-hmm. you know, completely. When you move it, it moves in so many different areas. So you know, I, I did 
I got to a point where when those paintings that I made last year, first times I've ever painted ever, um, I said, you know what, I'm going to just put them on my walls, you know, because mm -hmm. it was kind of painful for me to see them every day, but I put every one of them on the wall in my bedroom, and I would wake up, and because they were all, for me, um, therapy, you know, pretty much, it was all the processes of Abraham that I was going through and learning okay. from, and so I would go to each one every morning and um, go through each of the processes. And it was uplifting, but then it was like, what if somebody I don't know comes in here and sees these? What are they going to think? You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was painful, but I left them for a long time. For I just One day I decided to take them all down because I didn't feel good anymore. <laughs> I was like, I don't want nobody to see this. I don't, I don't feel in this place of feeling good. I'm going to take them all down. So I did. <laughs> but, That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, these paintings for you must be extremely loaded because you, yeah. know, you have such an emotional response to all of this that, you know, it must be like you going into your parents' room and exposing that, that, yeah. that secret thing that they don't want you to find, <laughs> you know, like, it's like that family treasure that, you know, is not supposed to see the light of day. Right. <laughs> so this, is some, yeah. this, is, this is some deep stuff, girl. It is. I know, I know it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I totally understand where you're coming from with all that, because... It's, it's so, it's scary. Yeah. It's really scary to get down in there and just like, yeah. to allow yourself to come to the surface like that. It is, but you know, at the same time, it feels so good. It feels right on schedule. It feels like, ah, oh, it's about time. <laughs> so... I, I just scary is a great great way to put that. <laughs> you know, this did you catch the part also about, you know, many blocked people are actually very powerful and creative personalities who have been made to feel guilty about their own mm -hmm. strengths and gifts. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel I resonate with that. I mean I I feel the trueness of that. <laughs> I truly do. And then a part of me says, Are you kidding me? You're not even an artist. <laughs> That grumpy bear just comes right up. So you're not even an artist. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe not in yeah. like, the traditional sense of, you know, sitting there for hours, like, working on very particular little brush strokes and stuff like that. But that's, yeah. that's not the only way to be an artist, you know. Yeah. Every, everyone's an artist in their own right. I believe that. You I do had believe a that. You poem published. Yeah. You, had, you have... <laughs> like the coolest hairstyles around, you know, you are like this, this beam of just creativity and it takes a lot of creativity to keep yourself uncreative and <laughs> right. to, keep yourself, to keep yourself stuck from actually creating. Uh, yeah. You're very creative. You're very creative. Okay, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that within my thoughts so I can remind myself when I start getting those little grumpy bear thoughts. And Katarina said, <laughs> "You're it takes very a lot of creative. creativity." Yeah, yeah. You know, one of my favorite parts of this book is the the growth part at the the very. I guess it's close to the end here. Yeah. Easy does it. Growth occurs in spurts. Yeah. God helps those who help themselves. Yep. Uh, I, as a creative <laughs> being, you will be more productive when coaxed than when bullied. It's so true. <laughs> and I feel that. I feel like um, I'm one who is, I don't know if you can hear, is, can you hear me okay? Because I know there's a lot yeah. going on in the background there. Um, no, we're I staying with fine. We're staying with other people, so there's babies and, and a lot of things going on. But um, I lost—I guess I lost my own train of thought there. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I actually wrote pretty much this entire growth paragraph in my um, on in my pages because I take notes as I'm writing for things that really stand out. And um, 
things that I go back over and, and take pictures of and you know remind myself of constantly and this this section right here was just so good because I could feel that I could feel like so much trueness and all and like every part of it <laughs> you know that mm -hmm. you know I, I like like you know when you hear Abraham's they're very uh, nurturing they're very gentle and there's other teachers out there that are very you know pushy and you got to do this way and you got to do you know and that works for some people you know but for me I, I like to be nurtured and <laughs> you know like to be um, cared for in that way you know I don't know if any of that for makes sure. sense but oh, it um, totally does rather than bossed around yeah yes and I had through a child you know childhood going to school for you know a little while that's what that's what I experienced was a whole lot of bossing around mm -hmm. and I was really good in school until that time until it was bossed you to do this and I was like but I wanted to do it on my own but now I don't want to because you're being mean <laughs> you know? and so I actually started failing school I quit even going to school because I was like those guys they're just mean <laughs> you know and so I miss so much school too I miss probably about 90 days of school per year like yeah of all, every single year of high school yeah I actually I, I quit in ninth grade I quit going to school and homeschooled myself I was like I'm not I'm done with that it's just drama and it's so not my world you know mm -hmm. um, I had I felt like I was an alien amongst many people <laughs> you know so I just homeschooled myself and I was I was good for me I was like I don't even know why I'm doing this but because my mom says that I need to finish school I'll go ahead and homeschool myself and finish in a year and graduate <laughs> so I did but, but yeah this this section really resonates well I mean just so perfect you know it's just right here yes I'm asking you to baby yourself that's awesome <laughs> Because many times we don't want to do that, you know. We want to say, nope, you got to be strong. You can't, can't baby yourself. There was like such a beautiful um, quote. I really want to remember it now. That you need to, in order to be strong, you need to treat yourself like the precious object you are, or something like that. Like, um, it's 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 more eloquently stated, but like the essence of it is that for you to be very tough and strong, you need to treat yourself preciously and tenderly, and mm -hmm. and and like a precious little gem. Oh, because yeah. that's how we become resilient on the external and on you know, in our life and in our dealings is because we're feeling nurtured and supported and, and yeah. held on the inside. On the inside. Ah, that makes so yeah. I, lo I love that. Yeah. It, people try to think that it's the other way around. You know, uh -huh. you can you can make yourself handle yourself with iron clad gloves and you know you're just like yeah. you gotta rah rah rah, you know yes. really strict <laughs> and firm with yourself. You need to get yeah. the door. No, actually, they're working on the bathroom. They're remodeling. Okay. So I know there's a lot of noise. So I said it's probably a lot of noise. My love was like, you should probably go in the truck <laughs> because <laughs> it's pretty loud. But no, my kids, they're actually in, in there playing together in one room. And so any other noise is not for me. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good. But yeah, um, especially when it comes to... Um, recovering creatively it's so tempting to want to judge yourself especially for the little doodles mm -hmm. or the little pictures and stuff like that that pop up in your journal or something mm -hmm. like, I had let me just show you my copy of the book um, yeah, from the first time I went through it I had all of these weird just random drawings in it like like I don't know if you can see that. Um, let me let me show you better. Flip the camera around. You know, just. Oh yeah, I see. Just random squiggly doodles and stuff. Like this is how my uh -huh. paintings start. 
It's just like that's, silly little things. I do that. I do that too. And I thought, why do you do this? This is like, I'll do the same thing. Not as detailed as yours. <laughs> but um, I do that too. In fact, when I first got this book. Oh, go ahead. No, you go for it. Um, when I first got this book, and you can't see it, but I was reading it outside because, you know, it was a surprise. My love got me this book, and I I was just standing out there with him, and I was reading it, and the sun was hitting my hair a certain way that I could see it on this page. And mm -hmm. I just kept looking at it in the shadow, and I was like, ah. Oh, I just want to, to sketch that out, and it came out nothing like my hair. And you can't even see it now, but it's in the book, and I can see it as you know vaguely as it was. And I did it real light so nobody could see it. <laughs> but um, then, because normally I'm like, I don't want to write in this book. You know, I'm real particular about books. But I felt really inspired to do that in that moment. And, I do that on, on pages, you know, just doodle and doodle, and I'm like, why do you do that? Is it because you can't draw? <laughs> no, no. Doodles, doodles start just like that, you know, like they're just drawings, everything. Uh, that's what I started doing when I was a kid. I just doodled a lot. I never actually worked on finished pieces, but you know, some of my best paintings came from doodles that I would do on my math homework or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's really important to encourage that, because I think that's our brain processing new ideas and new information. Ah. And the more that we are making sense, like I carry a little sketchbook with me, um, you know, when I go out and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's this, and I actually just put these heart stickers on it today. So I, I really Aww. like stickers, but I do too. <laughs> I love know. hearts. <laughs> and there's like this little thing that says "I love music" on the bottom, but nice. Um, you know, just, just, you know, because oftentimes when you think I am not an artist, it's mm. it's it's bullshit because you are an artist. You maybe are not making like finished pieces of artwork right now, but. That's nothing that like an art class or, you know, picking up a book on painting 101 cannot help you. There but right you now, right now, I'm focusing so much on art lessons with you because that's not what you need right now. You need yeah, right. to know that it's, o it's okay for you to have permission to even go there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Step one yeah. is that you are an artist and that you can be a prolific artist and that you can be an amazing, fantastic artist that does everything that you want to do and put your mind to. And I see it in you. You have like this budding spark that is just waiting yeah. to come out and jump out onto the page. <laughs> it's only a little scary. Give yourself permission. <laughs> It's scared. Yeah. It's terrifying. It's frightening yeah. as hell to put yourself out there and be vulnerable and be real with yourself. But yeah. I'm sure you have stories upon stories that want to be told through pictures and words. Yeah. Yes. And then it just, yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of scary. <laughs> you know, it really is. You know, this is. I want to show you. This is my bookmark for years now, <laughs> like for years since 2011, and it's because I, I had a a Coke, and it, had, it was a McDonald's Coke, and it was dripping, so I had a napkin under it, and I was at the laundromat when we first moved here, and I just doodled this, and then I hid it because I was like, that is so ridiculous because you can't draw. You drew this, and this is what it was. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Abraham words, you know, just vortex. What do you mean you can't and draw? No, you, I can't. Look, like that this symbolizes, you know, me spreading my wings and open my heart. And I totally um, see that. Like, what do you mean you can't draw? That's really but it's not right there. It's not a real drawing. What you know, are you my sister about? can draw. You can draw, but my drawings are like, <laughs> are like no way. <laughs> Oh my gosh, happy. Do you like, know what's funny is that, like, for you to actually be able to draw with, like, values and shading and line and all that kind of stuff, that's something that Art 101 can teach you. It's very, very simple, but the fact yeah. that you have those creative ideas, the way that your mind can think in those metaphoric pictures, that mm -hmm. is the true art. And... 
I, I feel that, and that's another reason I'm like, I shouldn't take classes because when you take classes on anything, it distorts your way of thinking instead of letting all that isness flow through me. So I'm, I'm having a but, little bit of an issue. But, but you can still have the all that isness to flow through you, but you can also learn more. And you yeah. can learn techniques and skills to apply to the all that isness in order to make it really pop. Do you know what ah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I like, do. You remember that painting that I did of the woman flipping her hair back and stuff? Yes, I love it. If I yeah. didn't understand about lights and darks and where to put the shading in order to like mm -hmm. make it work like that, like that painting just would be very flat. And it would be very, yeah. like, just one-dimensional. But because I understand form and how to make things look like they have volume, like, the hand actually looks like a full hand that's kind of reaching out. And, yeah. and like, the dress has those, that, those ripples that have, like, the dark on the bottom and the light on the top. And, like, they just are, like, pieces of yeah. the dress. And, you know, and it has dimension to it because I understand how light and dark works. Ah, uh. I and see. I learned that in an art class. But okay. the ideas, the ideas, though, of, um, you know, feeling ecstasy and, you know, flipping your hair back and going yeah. into the oneness with source. Yeah. Uh, that was something yeah. that flew, like, well, just flowed through my being. Yeah. Because I had the ideas, the inspirations, and I just used the, the, the 3D tool sets to create that and make it happen. I got you. Yeah, that makes so, perfect sense. So yeah. even picking up a book would be a good next step for you. Like, you know, there's tons of books out there on like how to draw faces or how to draw these things. Like you can infuse it with your own inspiration and creativity, but mm -hmm. all it's going to do is teach you the basics about form and how to like really render you know, an eye so that, you know, the shading is in the right place in order to make it look believable in a sense, you know? Uh -oh. So that's yeah. all that is. That's all that okay. is. Well, that's, that feels a little, little better. <laughs> so that way you're not blocking yourself from this idea of, I can't draw. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a double, a double purpose there because you're saying, I can't draw, but I'm also not willing to learn how. Right. <laughs> so it keeps yeah. you spinning. Yeah, definitely. Because you had a belief about learning how, thinking that it would take away what you already have. Mm -hmm. But nothing can take away what you already have besides you. you could, you're the only one that can block it. And no teacher out there can tell you that you can't paint or draw the way that you do anymore. Like, there's nobody out there that's going to do that to you. So you're the only person doing it to yourself. Yeah, right. That's true. Well, do you have any books that you would suggest? You know, I can actually do some research for you, and I'll find some stuff. I mean, just even going to the local library and looking up things in the art section, like basic, basic, basic things on, like, cartooning and sketching and, okay. you know, just, like, drawing figures. Like, there's figure drawing books. Like, you could take a figure drawing class if you're interested in drawing people. Like, there's, there's lots of great resources out there. But for you to feel reignited and connected to your heart and your soul and to allow that, all of that expression to flow through you, I mean, it's just, it's a matter of taking the next step of the, the how, you know, yeah. the how of, you know, knowing the proportions of the human body and, you know, like all those little technical details, but you don't... Yeah go start out looking for the technical details in order to accomplish what you're doing. You got to, you know, get that whole system connected first, which is why, you know, yeah. this, this course popped out at you the same time it did. It, it uh, definitely, it most definitely. And there's a lot of, um, like I said, rebirthing within myself and this is a vital part of it, you know. Um, so I know that it plays a role in so much more, you know, than meets the eye. <laughs> also, also, also happy. Um, YouTube. Okay, that's YouTube a good idea. YouTube videos on like how to draw certain things because it will give you ideas and inspiration that you might not have otherwise considered, like, you know, how to draw a face 
or how to draw, you know, like the human body or something like that. It's a good free resource for you. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Thanks, buddy. Um, I had picked up a book a while back at the library, and I kept it so long that they're like, you have to bring it back. You can't recheck it anymore. <laughs> but it was, um, and I'm trying to remember right now its name, and I can't. But it was, it was really good, but very technical. Um, it was just a beginning art book, I believe. Just the very basics. I think that's what I went for. Very basic. And one of the things that we had to do was draw upside down. Because um, that's one good way that they teach you to do it because it, it disassociates the mind from mm -hmm. thinking that is a face. And you just yeah. get to just see it as a shape. Yeah, it was really hard though. <laughs> Um, it gets easier. It gets easier. When you yeah. To do more because it trains the eye. It took hours, hours to draw a Spider Man upside down. Hours. <laughs> and well, I thought, maybe oh. it's also because Spider Man is not super interesting to you. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> if you draw something that you're actually interested in doing, I mean, I could see mm -hmm. that happening a little bit easier for you. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I didn't think of that. Yeah, <clears throat> but it was it was still at, at a time when um and she it was said to share it with people and I'm like no way I'm not showing this to anybody <laughs> mm -hmm. and I I hid it away you know it's I know it's still hidden right now I haven't even looked at it ever since I did it and uh, that's been a while I it just popped in my head but it's been What's a while. What's one thing that you would really love to draw? Um, you know, I would love to draw what I really see in my head, and it's not like actual people or like not something that's like um, I guess not physical, like the things I I don't know really. I've never really sat down and said what do I want to draw because I just 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 credit myself enough to say you can't really draw anything realistic, so don't go there. Um, so really, I don't know. Um, you could draw cartoony style. You can draw that would things. Be fun. That, I mean, you just showed me a perfectly good cartooning of, you know, that that you opening up your wings and having your heart like exploding into that sun. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, that's that's beautiful. Like that's kind of some of the stuff that I do too. Like like um, let me show you. Um, like, well, this one is a little different because it's daggers and arrows being thrown at my heart. <laughs> yeah, it's how it feels sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like, let's just see this. If you can see that, I don't know if you can. Not yet, it's a little blurry, but... It, uh, Oh, okay. I can almost make something. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's really good, though. See, it's actually it's, proportioned, it's just, and you know, the like proportion it, comes from learning more about you know the human the basics. body and just the basics. Because then, mm -hmm. when you have basics down, you can do anything you want with the basics. Yeah. You can. You can reappropriate them to be you know the images you see in your head because the images you see in your head typically are some sort of rendition of reality they don't necessarily need to be exactly reality but they're an idea a fragmentation like kind of like a, a suggestion of reality mm hmm yeah and so you know like with this one for instance like I drew the face a little more realistically um, mm -hmm. the shading and stuff, but the hair is totally cartooning. And I and love just, that. <laughs> and just I the eyes it. and the eyebrows and the dark lines and stuff are more cartoony. And mm -hmm. then I just came up with this heart, this breaking heart thing and the fire around it. And, you know, it's just, yeah. it's all, it's all things that I've seen and drawn before. And I just kind of combine them. Sure. Gotcha. But I had practice doing the stuff before. Um, in other ways, mm -hmm. and you know, um, hang on a second. You know, like like here, the woman flipping her hair back thing. Um, yes. 
I, I drew the body as uh, I had a reference image of a woman that was actually like flipping her hair back in water. Mm -hmm. And then I took that, that figure, that image of that figure and turned it into something that was more surreal. And yeah. I, the, the inspiration for the colors and the dress and everything came later when I had that first base image of, you know, the idea, a woman flipping her hair back. Okay, what do I want her flipping her hair back and expressing? I don't yeah. want her to be in water because that's not what I'm going for. But then I had, like, this idea of her just going into, like, this spiral of color. Uh, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, So I the do. idea built on itself but it started with something that was very basic and realistic. Wow, I see, yeah. That, and that, it shows in that picture, too, in the painting. It's just like, wow, I could sit there for hours and just look at that. And, you know, it's <laughs> it's a lot of inspiration, you know, just to, just to look at that painting right there. It's very inspirational. And, but do you yeah. see what I'm saying, though, is mm -hmm. that the inspiration can be... Uh, can yeah. come through even when you're dealing with something that's more realistic. Realistic, uh huh. I do. And I you do. don't have to make the realism actually real. It can be a suggestion, uh, a kind of, you know, like if you were to look at that painting close up, like she has blue skin, and you know her face kind of is is in an interesting angle that normal heads wouldn't go. Yeah. And, you know, it's just... It's How just, cool. <laughs> you, can, you can create your own world yeah. on the canvas, but if you take elements of the real world and kind of just go off of those and then jump off the deep end and go into creative, like, vortex land, you know? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. But to learn yeah. the basics first is a very, very helpful skill because then you'll understand how the shapes that you want to create will be created. You're right. It's it, because I will say that that'll be something that stops me every time I'll sit down and I'm like, I got all this in my head and I see it and I want it to come out just like I see it in my head and I don't even know the first step to take. So then I just start just whatever. I just let whatever come out and it's like that wasn't even close to what I seen, you know, and so it's, it's just kind of knowing apathy. the mm -hmm. it's a little yeah. bit of apathy. And I've I've experienced that myself before. Um, because I went through a phase where I did a lot of just, you know, random freestyle stuff and I mm -hmm. wasn't very happy with it either. Like I really wanted something more substantial that would actually resonate with other people and with myself. Yes. yes. And and what I did, you know, is I, I took a new art class, which was hard for me because I was like, I already know how to paint. But I was like, do I really know how to paint? Because I'm not really showing that I know how to paint. Cause I'm, not, I'm not showing myself. Yeah. Um, and so that was really good for me to just get some of those basic understandings down, even if it wasn't like exactly what I wanted to paint up front, it gave mm -hmm. me the tools I needed in order to be able to create the things that I really wanted to create. Yeah. I see. Well, that's important because uh, no, just knowing where to start, what shape to make. And I did, um, you know, when we talked last, you said to just practice drawing shapes. So I did on the, the Monday night call. That's what I sat down for an hour to do. Um, you know, I, I kind of renamed Empower Hour Coffee Hour. For me, it sounds better. <laughs> so I sat for coffee hour and did these shapes in my book and you know I'm sure nobody else can make out what they were and <laughs> it felt kind of like you shouldn't be doing this it's just silly but then it's something just said just keep going just keep doing it and different shapes came and I learned how to shade in a way that I didn't even know existed it was really pretty neat but um, like shadow shapes off of another color because I had bought this this set here, this pencil, I guess, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, general something, but I bought it and never even opened it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just don't want to open that, but I finally took it out and I used every pencil, there's charcoal pencils, uh, just different pencils in there, and then this little 
tool. I don't know what it's called, but it's just paper or something, and it's it's made out in like a cone. And so when I was using a charcoal, I was taking that cone and getting some color and just making other shapes with it to kind of like add shapes behind the shapes. It was just really neat <laughs> to be able to do that. I've never done it before. And then um, on this particular one I did, I wrote comfort zone because it was, you know, I was trying to come out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so, um, and I don't know if you could see it, it's just a, a big, that's one of the, there's, I did probably, I love that. probably, an, oh, I got this one all wrong there. There we go. I did probably an, an hour of these. Some are just, I wasn't really restricting myself on the doodle, so it was just doodle over doodle. It was square over square over, you know, just filling the shapes, um, circles and squares and triangles. And I, I really love writing, uh, doing vortexes, you know, the, the spiral shapes, so I just kept doing that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, just knowing the basics of the shapes is, is so, I, I, I'm sure, so vital in the next next step that I'm taking. <laughs> you know, first just to be comfortable with with anybody seeing my paintings or myself, you know, painting, and then and then knowing what shapes to create to make what I see in my head come to life. Because they look really good in my head. They really do. <laughs> they just, um, they find their way out on the canvas in a whole different way than I envisioned. So, oh, this charcoal is messy. <laughs> the charcoal is messy. It is. Now my fingers are all black. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But it, it is fun when I allow myself to be okay and think, you know, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> and then when I allow myself to say, who cares if anybody sees it? Just do it. Just do it. Then it's really, it, it feels relieving, you know. It feels refreshing, really. Mm -hmm. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Seriously. Just do it. Like you said, make that terrible art. Just do it. <laughs> And you know what you just showed me in your sketchbook is really not even terrible. Like the the blunt design of them are very interesting, just with the light and dark, and like the shapes that you're doing are very unique. And yeah, like there's a lot going on there. Yeah, you know I'm still in this. I just want to say, you know, I can feel myself when I hear any kind of um, that was good or anything. I, there's a part of me that says, you know, like if you're a kid in kindergarten and you're a kindergarten teacher saying, oh, that's good no matter what it looks like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because my love will do that. He'll tell me something looks good and I'm like, yeah, right. You're just saying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it feels like I, I can feel that block in there. Where, like I can, yeah. it's just like comes right right up to, you know, it's a grumpy bear comes right up and says, nah, uh <laughs> don't listen. They're just telling you that. <laughs> you know. I don't think that it would serve our our relationship for me to lie to you about stuff. Like oh that. no, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that I'm being true to. It, like what yeah, for is sure. coming up and and not that's just good. pushing that's it away good. and saying oh no that's not real you know but just letting it come to surface so that I can move it because I I desire to move the energy to you know completely like I know Abraham, Abraham's work says just lay new pipes but for me when it's something so um, so much of who I am and I've let this character build so much over time I, I, I want to not just lay the new pipes but I want to you know move the energy to lay new pipes on on you know new grounds you know so yeah. that yeah. this is important for me to, to look at this and be honest with myself with my feelings and emotions and and that way I can work through them you know <laughs> for sure. So, sure that's the so, yeah. I mean that's really yeah. good you're noticing that I mean, yeah. for me, I think that's just really interesting to see because I'm just like, damn, this girl doesn't think she can draw, but she's showing me, like, all these cool drawings, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> see, it's, it, and I can feel like, oh, I'm going to get there, you know. I desire yeah, you are getting know. there. And just yeah. seeing the fact that you're 
you're actively drawing and you're actively getting these things out on paper is really good in the direction of where you're wanting to go. Yeah, you know, it's really something I love to do. I really love to do it, but I, I can also feel like, you know, the not good enoughness coming through. So it, it kind of takes me away from it. It takes me away like I don't want to do it because I don't want to feel like that. I just want to feel good, you know, mm -hmm. but it's time to move that. <laughs> it's time to feel good and do what you love to do without criticizing yourself. So Exactly, you because know. this is just a metaphor for everything else in your Everything life. else, exactly. It's so true. Which yes. is why I like dealing with people on creativity blocks, because it's a very benign and gentle mm -hmm. way of dealing with everything <laughs> Everything, else. with life, yeah. Because art, art is a really good metaphor for all of it. Mm-hmm, that's true. Yeah. So, I just gave you away my secret. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I can't say enough how thankful I am for this course, you know, coming to me when it did. You know, synchronicities, <laughs> you know, universal well, alignment. <laughs> I'm actually going to be putting together a bit of a promo video just because, I mean, I'm planning on doing more of these and... Mm -hmm you know, doing more like one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. So if you would do a testimonial for me, I would love that. I would love I to. Just the fact that you've been so actively engaged and you're actually getting so much out of this. I mean, yeah. you would be a, a prime candidate for this testimonial that I need. Because I actually have three testimonials I've gotten from people so far, and now I really like Awesome. That. I would like one from somebody in this course. The other yeah. ones were from people who are just personal um, personal coaching people. So, yeah, I would, I would love to. And you know, there goes that part of me that's like, oh, it's not going to be any good. What if she expects this and this and this? You know, I'm like, stop. I'm not expecting anything. Stop of you. talking to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, turn that off. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. there though. I'm no, getting there. And and make it. You know, telling myself, go for it, do it, no matter what. Just, just taking myself there. And not 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 stopping because when you stop and put on the brakes and say oh I can't, then you just stay there. You know nothing nothing changes. So I'm I'm moving moving forward. So yes, I would love to, and and I know once you you know get in alignment and let that stuff just flow, it just it's a natural you know it, it naturally comes out in the in a perfect way. So. I, I'm allowing, <laughs> allowing, allowing, allowing. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, happy. I think everybody else has kind of decided to not show up tonight. It's okay. We'll probably have to do something else for them. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just, I really appreciate that you are here, and I think this is a really good discussion, I and mean, this was really, really helpful for just the whole environment of today. <laughs> yes, in many ways, definitely. I'm, I'm glad that we didn't cancel it because I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> I, I, got that, I got that impression that, you know, tonight was Happy's Night. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it. <laughs> you know, it's great. It was because all week I was like, I need to get with Katarina so we can schedule that that time on Skype. But this week was like. What? Oh, so <laughs> I guess was like, we kind of got it, it, didn't we? I, we got it. You know, it happens when it's supposed to. <laughs> it does. It does. I, I, I feel that. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy that it, it came out this way. You know, for us to talk like this, and it really helps me in so many ways. And I know you know that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a cycle. It works for both of us. So it does. It's, it's fantastic. So for this. You know, I do have one question about one of these questions um, from the morning pages. Or actually, it's the after morning pages. My belly is all hungry. <laughs> um, okay, on, let's see. Did you do? Okay, yeah, the check in. At the very end, it's the, the question number four. And it, I never know quite how to answer that question, so I'm not sure what it's meaning, what it wants me to describe. So, were there any other issues this week that you consider 
I can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> Let me get the books. Um, yeah, here we go. Were there any other issues this week that you consider significant for your recovery and describe them? So every week I describe something and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm doing this part right. So could you give me some examples? Like, you know, breaking up with your boyfriend or something like that. Like, like ah. things that are important for your recovery, things that are kind of landmark, monumental, just things that really stick out in your mind as for, like, importance that, or, you know, maybe you got a call from somebody who wants to publish a poem of yours, or you got a call from, like, a gallery, or you got a call back from a gallery, or, you know, something like that, like, just, you know. Is it, is it, like, it good matter. or bad? <laughs> good or bad. Good or bad. I mean, oh. significant for your recovery. Typically, good and bad things happen. Uh, when we're on this journey, this process. So it's not necessarily like either or, it's both. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's perfect. Okay, good. Or so bad. for me, like I could write like, you know, had an emotional meltdown the other night. Like, like <laughs> Got it. And that's, and that's significant because a lot of good came out of that for me. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of artwork came out of that for me. And, yeah. You know, it was, it was all part of the process. I got you. Okay. So, and so when it says describe them, describe the thing that happened and how it, how it helped you. Is that what it's wanting? Okay. Good or bad, just describe the, I'm sorry, I want to write this all down while it's fresh in my head. <laughs> it's okay. And how it helped. In the process. Okay, perfect. And that was really that was one I just left bl blank this time, but now I can answer it because I was like, I just don't feel like I've been answering this properly this whole time. It's, um, it's uh, just as you see it. Yeah. And let's see. Okay, that was it. I think I thought I had another question here, but I don't. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm supposed to still be doing my three affirmations after the morning pages, but I am. Keep um, doing it if it's helping you. I oh, I love it. Yeah. No, if you're actually feeling it, like if it's <clears throat> feeling like a nuisance or a bother or an annoyance, then don't do it. But No, um, you know, I, I love affirmations, and these feel so good when I do them. Um, I pick three new ones off of that list every week. Um, like today, I'll go through and pick three more and write them every morning after the affirmations. But I thought, I don't know if I'm supposed to, but it just feels good. And well, after... Yeah, this isn't this isn't high school English. You know, this, is, <laughs> this is you know creative recovery. So I'm right. Not a teacher in the front of the room slapping your hand if you do something oh. wrong. <laughs> right, I gotcha. Yeah, one of the things I love to do that just it feels so good after these affirmations is one of my favorite affirmations, and it's Abraham Hicks, of course, and it's um, actually one of the first. The first drawing that I did on the wall. Very beginning of all of this. Can you still hear me? It says yeah, I cut out for the past like 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah, it said just show me my connectivity was down. So the first drawing on the wall. Oh, okay. Did you hear any of the the uh, actual words? <laughs> no, the last thing I had to say was. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. The first drawing I did on the wall, and I don't know if I showed that to you or not. I had meant to show that to you, but I don't know if I did. But it says these words. It says, "I am free. I am powerful. I am good. I am love. I have value. I have purpose. All is well." And those those are. Those mean so much to me because that was actually the very beginning of all of this new, you know, it's been, I guess it's been about almost four years 
this recovery for me, the, all of it, this new you know, creation, this rebirthing. And so I kind of tend to write it on everything that feels good to me. You know, like mm -hmm. the end of these, um, after doing these affirmations, it just feels like so in sync to do that because it puts it all together, mm -hmm. you know. So so that's, that's one of the things that I do um, every day. And I, and I have to say it, it really is a really good process to do these. Um, because I can feel like I'll write at the end of the week how these things have moved me, you know, to a new place. And that, because this one here, the first one, I'm willing to let the universe create through me. You know, that that's that saying that every day over the you know five times and a sitting that that moves you in ways, you know. So if I feel like it's moved me, then I'll write about it. So I, I love this whole process. <laughs> You know, I wanted to say just some, one more thing because it was kind of something that, you know, might resonate with you. But, um, you know, it's funny because, like, you know, that idea of you feeling like you should already know how to put things from your head onto the page, right? Like, mm -hmm. that is so, like, 5D of you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is because, like... We just, like, think that we should already have it all figured out, but, like, yep. we forget that we're dealing with these, like, three-dimensional bodies that, you know, still yes. have to go through this process of learning the muscle memory <laughs> in order to make the things happen with our hands, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. so, I mean, to give yourself that time to actually be able to develop that coordination and that, that skill, it's like, yeah. you know, like, there's part of you that just wants to be able to sit down at a computer, or not, not a computer, I'm sorry, I'm in front of my computer for the life, but um, sit down in front of, like, a piano and just start playing a symphony. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, there, there's part of you that feels like, I, I should just be able to I do should, that, right? exactly. But you, but you forget... <laughs> You know that there's like these these things. It's called skill sets that yes. you need to learn how to do, um, <laughs> in order to be able to get yeah. to that place of the fluidity where you're able to just let it truly just be transposed from spirit. Yeah, you're right. It's true. So, <laughs> allow yourself um, your process. That's you know I gotta hold on. I gotta write that down. That is really important. Allow the process. And I know we hear that a whole bunch, right? But but allow yourself I, your allow process. My, exactly. Allow. And what I'll what I'll end up doing is putting this up where I can see it every day because that that like resonates with me all the way, and it, I, I feel that if I hear that enough and tell myself that enough, and remind myself that enough, <laughs> that this will really start to take off. Yes, because there's no other pace besides yours yeah. to take in all of this. That's true. Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to the great artists. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Mm -hmm. It's true. So that is awesome. <laughs> all right. Let's see. And week four seems, I, I was so tempted to start it already, but I said, nope, I have to wait. <laughs> I have to wait till our gathering, and then I'll start it. So I don't know if, if you read it all in one sitting or if you read it throughout the week or how you do it, but um, I wasn't I'm sure. I'm not how even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you because <laughs> I don't want you to compare yourself to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you know, you get you get in these modes where you remember how it was in school, and you expect the same. You know, you got to no. do it this way. No. And all the while in school, you're pushing to do it your own way. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And now I'm allowing now... you your own way. And you're like <laughs> trying like, to rebel no. against me. <laughs> no, no, I need you to slap me on the wrist with those rulers. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay, well I'll just do it this way, and I just read it all in one day. And then start the processes. But maybe I shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> it's okay, because I'm not even telling you mine. Way. You, you can tell me your way all you want. It's not going to change my way. <laughs> ah, this is so funny. Oh, that's good. That's, that's freeing. Very freeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get started on ne next week, week four. Okay. And <sighs> share with you soon. And so I still want to get with you on um, when is a good time to get with you for um, the Skype meeting. Um, yeah, for I think, sure. I think any time really after six is fine with me or good with me. I don't know what time that is your time, but six here. Okay. Mm. Uh, that sounds good. I think it's like let's seven. Let's say. Do you want to do it tomorrow? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, let's do it tomorrow. And we'll do it. We're in Central Time too, right? Uh, no, Pacific. Oh, so you're Pacific. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I kept thinking because you're from Texas. Yeah, I used to be in Central Time. <laughs> I used to be in Central Time. But yeah, okay. Um, so that's just two hours yeah. difference, right? Is that too late yeah, for you? Yeah, it's a two hour difference. No, it's, it's totally not. You're fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do probably 6 or 6.30 tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Either one, 6.30. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I'll put between right. six and six thirty, and I, you know, I don't know how to use Skype. I've never used it, so you just kind of walk me through it. <laughs> just I have you it installed. Also do Google Hangout or something. It's it's the same same way of using Google Hangout. You know. Oh, okay. Um, you know, you just have like you can look up a little Skype tutorial on how to add contacts and stuff like that, and I'll give you my Skype name. Okay, perfect. Well, that's perfect. So I'll awesome. see you tom tomorrow at between 6 and 6.30. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, have a good night. Take care, happy. <laughs> Bye, sweet dreams. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye.